Yeah, we are recording. So, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Google Summer of Code uh, office hours. Uh, we reconvene after a short break uh, due to Christmas and the New Year. Uh, so today we have our common agenda. We will have some time for QA in the beginning so that the students and uh, potential mentors uh, who came to ask questions have opportunity to do so. And after that, we will uh, have a standard uh, project meeting where we will discuss application status and, and uh, other uh, things. So you may see that uh, the agenda is still being edited, but I think we could start. So does anybody have any questions about uh, JSOC, about the application process and whatever? So we can start from that and uh, update agendas if needed. Is it Jeff? I Sorry. Is, I think that is Jeff. Jeff, can you mute your line, please? I will mute him. Got it. Oi. Sorry. It wasn't Jeff. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> okay, uh, that happens. So, yeah, if anyone has any questions, just put them in the chat uh, or just unmute yourself and ask. Uh, because yeah, the main purpose of these meetings is to also answer whatever question you may have. Okay, so let's then go through the agenda. So there was item one person needs to be the note taker. Uh, who did put it? I can, take, I can take notes if nobody else wants yeah, to. Yeah, usually we uh, just do it together. So multiple people have access in this document and anybody can uh, post changes. So when somebody speaks, others can uh, just uh, make notes. But yeah, if somebody wants to do it officially, please do so. Raven, I could take notes if needed. Mm, just whomever wants to uh, write them down. So open action items, uh, yeah, it was quite a break. So we didn't meet for two weeks or three weeks. I mean, uh, two weeks, right? Yeah, two weeks. Um, so we have some uh, pending action items. One is JSOC 2019 and results blog post. Uh, so that's uh, still on me. And, uh, it's in my hall of shame. So. Yeah, I was uh, busy in December and I just underestimated the number of uh, things I need to do. So I didn't finish it and my apologies to uh, Martin and uh, Marky who spent a lot of time. Uh, but yeah, uh, I hope to finally submit the patches. So yeah, by the end of this week, it should be done. If you need any help with that, all, like, please let me know out there. Yeah, uh, uh, additional reviews will, will be needed. So one of the problems that, uh, yeah, since uh, the blog post was delayed, uh, it uh, needed some updates. And when I did some updates, I also, uh, then we had Jenkins fault, and the uh, blog post needed updates again. So, yeah, now that's how it happens. So anyway, uh, yeah, by the end of the week, it will be submitted for review. Um, other thing, uh, we need uh, blog posts uh, by students. Uh, so we had uh, three students uh, who went to Lisbon uh, and yeah, we expect uh, them uh, to publish blog posts. Um, uh, currently it's in progress, uh, but yeah, we need to do something. So I'll send a reminder later. And okay, any other action items here? So, yeah, travel reimbursement. So all students have submitted their expense reports. Uh, maybe, ex no, Pariche didn't submit expense uh, reports. I'll uh, send him a reminder, but Abude and Long uh, uh, 
uh, did so and I guess uh, they were reimbursed. And uh, you, Mark, you also submitted uh, the expense report, right? Yes, I've already done mine and I've also reached out to Parache and I just reached out to him again. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, so Parache and uh, to go. So yeah, I also didn't submit anything so far. Okay, uh, what else do we have in the list? Hmm. Yeah, there was a bunch of action items, but I believe that uh, all, almost all of them are addressed. So if nobody recalls other action items uh, we should have done, uh, I think it's fine. Okay, um, so what did change uh, since um, the last meeting? So we got the official announcement of Google Summer of Code 2020. So now if you go to the website, you can find that uh, there is timeline available. So this timeline is uh, detailized enough. And here, so yeah, basically we start applications in less than one week. And that's why I brought up the topic uh, with uh, the application status, because we have a draft ready, but uh, we might need uh, to update this draft a bit. And uh, after that, yeah, we will we we'll basically have time and fees to put the application. The rest of the schedule is basically the same as in previous JSOCs. So yeah, there are some deviations between these. So here you may see that uh, basically community bonding and coding, they started earlier this year. So mid-May it's already coding. It's almost two weeks earlier than in the previous year. Uh, so. I wonder whether it's aligned to use everyone's plans, but yeah, I think we can uh, do it. Okay. So regarding other updates, um, yeah, in, in the end of January, there will be FOSDEM. Uh, at FOSDEM, there will be GSOC table and GSOC uh, meetup. Um, I wonder whether anybody goes uh, to FOSDEM this year. I may go. I'm still working with my internal uh, bits mm -hmm. of my company. Yes. Yeah, so well, where is it? Uh, in Brussels. Oh, I, yeah. I won't. Be, I won't be able to go. Yeah. For your information, Marky, we will also have a contributor summit uh, on January thirty first. Okay, that may yeah. be a good selling selling point for me to my. Okay. Executive staff. Yeah, so if you go, it would be great if you also uh, um, go to the contributor summit. Um, I can uh, send you an invite. It will be a small event being compared to Lisbon. In Lisbon, we had uh, more than 80 people, um, but yeah, more than half of them uh, were actually users of Genesis, not contributors. And here we do a small event which is specifically focused on. Uh, uh, Jenkins key projects, um, including uh, various features we want to deliver uh, also as a part of JSOC um, and also infrastructure, community governance. So maybe one of the outcomes here, there will be more project ideas. At least uh, it's my plan. So I guess that's it. So uh, nothing new. Does anybody else have an update? Oh yeah. Mm. Then, yeah, let's just continue. Okay, I think this. Mm. So. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, actually I did a couple updates. I contacted, um, if you scroll down in the action items from the previous, uh, mm -hmm. that we had in the previous meetings, I contacted, um, I think, uh, let's see, I have to scroll down myself to see it. Um, mm -hmm. The infrastructure team, I sent an email to their mailing list to announce that, uh, essentially to 
infrastructure, pipeline authoring, platform, and Jenkins UX. Mm -hmm. All those four places, I posted the JSOC 2020 announcement. Yeah, that's great. Um, I have not gotten any response or reply. Well, it was a Christmas period. So, for example, that's why I didn't really uh, do anything in the developer mailing list. I did that on January 3rd. So that was yeah. Friday last week. It still counts as Christmas for lots of, lots of people. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, anyway, we already have enough project ideas to apply. We have uh, project ideas to get published. Uh, but uh, we can spend some time in order to facilitate more ideas. Um, so it was a wrong blog post, sorry. Um, yeah, this one. Um, what else uh, do we have? Um, yeah, in my case, I also uh, spoke about uh, JSOC at uh, multiple meetings. Um, uh, basically, all SIG meetings and subproject meetings we had there since this time. So maybe we'll get some outcome. Um, but yeah, right now, no specific project ideas are submitted uh, through these channels. I also got an update from uh, Kara about Jenkins X. So their plan is to actually apply as a part of Jenkins. And uh, this uh, year, so uh, they are going to propose uh, two project ideas. Um, so if they do it, then they okay, will just uh, send an application and also uh, reference Jenkins X in the description. Is it fine with everyone? Yeah. It's fine with me. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so for us, it's not a big deal to get uh, more ideas published. Though, yeah, again, we might need uh, to work our project ideas list. Because last year, when we got uh, to 30 project ideas, it was quite difficult to find anything. Uh, so, yeah, maybe some refactoring would be nice on the website. Yeah, let's see. Um, and actually, that's it. Yeah. Unless there is anything else, uh, let's move on. Okay, project idea submission process. Okay, so yeah, we have it here. Yeah, um, there were some changes uh, in the process uh, over the past weeks, and thanks a lot uh, to Martin for updating for this process. So right now, the recommendation is to do the most of the discussion um, in the developer mailing list. And we use uh, JSOC, uh, GitHub channel, and mailing list just to do some sanity check in order to ensure that um, the ID is fine. And then you're expected to proceed with a seek mailing list or developer mailing list to discuss the technical side of the project idea. After that, uh, you're expected to submit a pull request. So we keep all project ideas uh, in the Jenkins IO website. Um, yep. So there is uh, a link in the guideline which basically points uh, to the list of the current 2020 uh, project ideas. And uh, yeah, you can just submit more in the same format. The main difference from the previous year, in previous year we were mostly using Google Doc. Uh, here, our preference is to proceed with uh, website. So you put uh, project ideas on the website uh, just um, as a ski doc. And yeah, you can still uh, reference Google Doc for additional details. But uh, we would rather prefer body to be uh, visible on the website directly. Is that correct, Martin? Yes. Yeah, just yeah, that's correct. Both the Google Doc and um, and the content of the A Doc file are good. Um, 
but the Google Doc is optional. So you can just uh, submit a pull request and get the idea discussed mm -hmm. in the pull request. Exactly. So what we have now, we have um, more than 10 project ideas. Uh, we got uh, students reaching out uh, regarding these projects. But uh, all the ideas published here, uh, they are basically um, um, transferred from the previous year. We have some uh, discussion in the mailing list, uh, proposal uh, by Mark Waite and uh, Rick. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, we still need to get them published. Here, um, the most of the ideas now come from Google Doc. So like that. But uh, instead of that, uh, the recommendation is to just submit a pull request. what do we have after that? So basically that's it. So once pull request is submitted, um, uh, Jenkins JSOC core admins will review it and integrate the changes on the website. All JSOC core admins uh, have uh, right access on the website so we can deliver the changes quickly. Okay, so that's uh, the entire process. Mark, uh, do you have any questions or do you need uh, any clarification about the process? I don't think so. Let me play back to you what I think my steps are. So I've started the, I chose the optional path of using a Google Doc. Mm -hmm. It's been reviewed and discussed. We'll review and discuss it a little further here. The next stop for me is after our discussions here, submit a pull request. A preferred pull request one per idea or Bundle two, what's the, mm -hmm. is, how, how high is the bar to have a pull request accepted? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think there is a specific bar. So what we have on our uh, website, we have um, uh, draft project ideas and we have final project ideas. So um, there is a bar for um, uh, accepted ideas. So we, yeah. we have um, expectation that all accepted project ideas will have newbie friendly issues. So they will have some explicit description how to quick start with this project, how to explore this project. So here there is a bar. But for draft project ideas, uh, it's fine to basically submit whatever you want. And actually, I even had a proposal in mind to just allow referencing uh, um, uh, mailing list discussions here as a first step. But yeah, it's an open question. Uh, but uh, to submit the project ID, you don't need to, to, send, uh, to spend much time. Great. Thank you. Okay. So next stop for me after our discussion today is pull request. Thanks. All right. And also uh, to start the discussion in the developer mailing list because um, you know, there might be a lot of people interested. Well, no, no. I, so the ideas that I was specifically bringing are already on the developer list as mailing list topics. So agreed. Developer, uh, because I've thought it's on the JSOC. Oh, oh, good question. You're right. I'll have to double check. Good point. Okay. And, and now I guess one of the points mm -hmm. where I need some guidance specifically is on the mentors. So mm -hmm. it's preferred that the mentors are confirmed willing to act as mentors before yes. they're listed as potential mentors, right? Exactly. Okay. So that's, and so that's an open gap for me on two of mine. I need to talk with two or three candidates before I put their names officially into the pull request mm -hmm. as potential matters. All right. One, so one thing I will add to that, Mark, is uh, when you speak to the potential mentors, uh, I would highlight, underline, and bold to them the time commitment that they need to spend being mm -hmm. an actual mentor. So they, okay. uh, so they understand that going into it and they don't, you know, we don't have problems with them saying, oh, I can't okay. dedicate the time. And then we lose, we lose traction on that project and, and potentially have a you know, conflict. Yeah. So okay, we have so... Uh, some expectations listed here. Uh, but yeah, here's explicit expectation about uh, time dedication. And yeah, I guess what we need to do before this phase um, ends is to add expectations from mentors per phase. So it was one of the retrospective feedback from the previous year, because uh, some mentors were confused about community bonding, uh, and also students uh, were confused about what uh, they expected to do because uh, some mentors were not uh, reachable due to reasons basically out of control in the community. 
So we will need to explicitly list uh, the expectations here and to, uh, we will expect mentors to commit uh, to this plan. Okay, and now as I'm looking at this page that's on, there's in the conflict of interest prevention, uh, it mm -hmm. looks like I need to be sure that mentors are using either spare time from their personal time or time that their company has authorized as contribution to open source. Mm, this exactly. isn't okay, great, thanks. All right, so I, I mm -hmm. need I had not read this page and I'm not done it clearly enough. So thanks very much for having it. I will use that as my baseline. Thank you. The other important aspect here, Mark, is that, um, is that the JSOC project um, that, that mentors, uh, mentor, you cannot, for example, for me, it cannot be a deliverable to my employer. There would be a conflict of interest. If, if I had that. So I, I have to make sure that the JSOC projects are not part of any internal roadmap at my company, internal roadmap that I have for myself with my employer. Well, okay. yeah, ju just a bit specific. So it's fine to have personal investment um, in uh, the project and actually we encourage that. Um, but uh, yeah, what uh, Martin uh, tried to say is that uh, basically there should be no commitment because JSOC projects may not succeed. And uh, if you um, put uh, this project on the critical path in your company, then it won't end well. Right. And so. I, I think in the spirit of that, I was interpreting Martin's guidance as this should not be a feature that my company is creating that I'm going to lend to the GSOC effort to do it for us. Mm -hmm. it, it's really, this is something independent of, of my mm -hmm. employer's interests and, but interesting to me personally. And in my mm -hmm. case, my specific ones are intensely interesting to me personally. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we hear some examples because yeah, when we started the JSOC in 2016, uh, it immediately became a big concern in the project. So there are some uh, examples, and you can uh, start from them. Great. Yeah, basically our expectation that uh, the project idea has uh, value to the Jenkins community, um, that uh, it's open source, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it's fine uh, or probably fine uh, that uh, a company uses it because, well, Jenkins uh, basically is based on contributions and uh, the most contributions come from companies. Okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so in my, in my specific examples, I think they are okay mm -hmm. here because this is not the, the ideas I've proffered are not, mm -hmm roadmap entries on anything my, my employer has offered. So I think I'm, I'm okay, but I'll, I'll safety check that with a couple of internal people first. Good, okay. Exactly. Okay, so I just put uh, links here. Any other comments uh, with regards to this topic? One comment, especially from, for students on the call, is that uh, yeah, project ideas can be proposed not only by uh, potential mentors, but also by students themselves. So it means that if you have an idea about what you would like to change uh, in Jenkins, you can definitely do so. Although we will need to find potential mentors. Um, and uh, if you have a specific idea in mind, uh, please let us know about it earlier so that we have uh, time uh, to help you this making it happen. Yeah, absolutely. For the students that are online, um, I also want to emphasize that JSOC projects are your projects primarily. The list that we offer is 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 is, is, um, is projects that are of interest to the community. But by all means, if you have ideas on how to improve Jenkins, whether it's plugins or core or UI or anything related to Jenkins, if you have ideas that you don't see in our list, most definitely, you know,
create a project idea and submit a pull request. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's a difference between the project idea and a project submission for the student. So the project idea is just um, the difference between the submission and the idea is that uh, the submission is the student application to participate mm -hmm. and um, as as an intent to implement the idea. And the idea is just a, a more general. Um, sort of project where multiple students can um, apply. Exactly. So, so, so uh -huh. can you explain, expand a little further on that for my benefit, Martin? So an idea from me as an idea source is uh -huh. not necessarily a fully detailed project plan. It's not fine grained. It's much more coarse grained. Or is there something else I've missed? Exactly. It's an idea. Yes, it's it's specified in general terms. It's not a detailed specification. It's not um, it's not a detailed project plan. This that comes later, and it's actually something the student is expected to work on and create. Part of the community bonding um, is is creating the detailed plan. Mm -hmm. So students will first write an application towards a specific idea or towards more than one. A student can submit multiple applications. Um, yeah. I think there's a maximum there uh, that, that Google will, will limit. You, you cannot have a student applying to 50 ideas, but the student can apply, I think, to three, I think, is the maximum. Mm. Yeah, I thought they increased it uh, back to 10. But if I need to double check the documentation. Still, uh, the number is relatively low. Um, okay. For example, uh, we can just take a look uh, previous year. For example, uh, let's take one of the projects. Okay, let's just take the first one, multi-branch uh, pipeline support. So here, for example, we have, um, yeah, there is a lot of documentation, but yeah, there is a GSOC proposal. Uh, this is a uh, project uh, by Perry Che. So this is uh, what uh, he submitted uh, uh, to us uh, as a part of his application. And well, it's a rather an exceptional case because uh, yeah, this is a relatively long proposal. Usually we expect something maybe three to four pages. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is uh, an idea which was submitted by student. After all processing, after discussion in the community, after some prototyping, there was a lot, lot of discussion for this project. Uh, but if you take a look at the uh, project ideas, uh, the idea was uh, relatively simple. Wait, is uh, was GitLab, right? So here was uh, the project idea. So it's just uh, one uh, page, maybe a bit more, uh, which uh, summarizes the expectations. And uh, yeah, this is our recommendation. Uh, give students freedom uh, to select uh, the, uh, the implementation, uh, to select uh, the approach they want to deliver on. Uh, because yeah, basically they are driving the project. It's not something like we hire people uh, thanks to Google sponsorship to deliver on our projects. That's, uh, that's very... One thing, one thing to, to, mm -hmm. I was going to say, one, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that there is an expectation that the students are going to be coding full-time for about three months. And mm -hmm. so even if you're not going into detail, it's probably a, a good idea to try to make sure that's going to be the case. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know in particular, the one that I proposed mentored last year, I, I don't think it ended up being um, weighty enough that the, the student had to work all that hard, and, and there was some concern expressed. How, however, um, he proposed the project, and, and we accepted it. So, um, you know, him, whatever he did, as long as he completed it, it was fine. And, and so we want projects that are media enough that the, the student's going to be working full time. That makes sense. Thank you. So I'm, I'm taking from that that it's okay that I bring out what I consider to be hard problems and mm -hmm. failure is an acceptable condition here 
and and it's it's okay that I put something up that's difficult enough that I think it will be a, a stretch for a student to complete. Great, I like that. That is that, that is correct. Yeah, so yeah, definitely, and and like. like mm -hmm. So the improvements one um, potentially could be open ended, and and so it's up to the students to mm -hmm. kind of dig into that and and you know write a good proposal that would benefit the community and and also um, you know make sure mm -hmm. that they they work hard for the entire time. All right. So Mark, if you want to have some examples, you can just refer to previous years. Uh, there are project ideas which basically have different formats. Uh, some uh, proposals, for example, this is uh, pipeline support for Programmable the Builds plugin. That uh, it explicitly says that it's a uh, potential tasks. So you can take a look at this list, and yeah, you can realize that uh, this list probably a uh, one-man year of work, maybe not, but uh, still it's pretty big. Uh, but uh, it, it gives uh, potential students uh, freedom uh, to choose what uh, the topics they would like to focus on, and what. Uh, skills they want to get, what technologies they want to study, so they can uh, take this proposal and uh, build uh, their own project. And, and it's okay that a student, it's okay that a student may select a subset of the idea for the final proposal and then the, the Jenkins project accepts the proposal and the mentors work with them on the proposal. Exactly. Or work with them to implement what has been what they have proposed. Great. Okay. Right. Uh, so yeah, and uh, proposal may be completely different from project ideas. We had some cases where basically alternate solutions were proposed. Um, and yeah, uh, we do reviews uh, during uh, the student selection process and project. Uh, so um, uh, there is a phase when uh, we choose. Uh, 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 projects. It's basically here. So it's one month since March 31st uh, to April 27th. So this is uh, the time when organizations review these proposals, uh, require slots, uh, uh, map slots to students, and uh, they will, uh, we will be making uh, final decisions about the proposals. Uh, but uh, at that point, we won't be able to edit anything. So it's our joint interest uh, to have a lot of discussions here. So after, well, basically starting from now until uh, the deadline for student application, uh, there will be a lot of discussions with uh, potential students about uh, project ideas, about uh, project they propose, and many students uh, submit their project drafts in this advance so that uh, they can be reviewed by potential uh, mentors and uh, it's possible to steer uh, uh, their uh, projects and provide feedback so that uh, they become realistic. So, yeah, I guess that's it about uh, project ideas. So if someone wants to discuss specific ideas, we can uh, do a case study um, at the next meetings. And again, uh, once a project ideas are submitted, we will be doing uh, reviews as JSOC or means to help potential mentors uh, to um, uh, properly represent their project ideas. Any other questions uh, regarding this topic? Mm, hello, everyone. Uh, I would yeah. like to ask one question. Yeah, sure. Uh, are these projects are from scratch, or any work is done on them, or anything is done regarding the project? It depends on the project idea. So some project ideas uh, offer uh, completely new projects. Um, create a new plugin, for example, create a new feature. Some project ideas may be targeted towards improvement of uh, existing functionality. For example, uh, Mark proposed project ideas uh, for Git plugin, uh, which exists, uh, well, since the very beginning of Jenkins, I would say. And uh, there are still opportunities to do something like performance improvement. So it uh, depends on the project. Thank you. Uh, can I add something to it? Yes. So, um, so like uh, basically, what I want to ask is, uh, uh, as a as a prospective student, you know, uh, so mm -hmm. is it, um, so like, in a particular project, um, say, uh, should I start like like start doing some amount of work to uh, to show that you know the, mm -hmm. I know I know what I'm talking about, right? Like. Uh, 
how familiar i am with the project or or is it just that i just have to be clear on the theory aspect of it that i just need a good proposal and that's it uh well uh, we do not strictly require students uh, to contribute to the project before google summer of code starts uh but the reality, the reality is that uh, all accepted student uh, for example last year uh, contributed uh, to the project in advance because uh, it helps them to create uh, good project ideas so our approach is that uh, for every project uh, we have some new different issues referenced uh, from the proposals so let me take this promotion uh, plugin again um so we do not expect you to do random contributions or whatever uh, we expect you to uh, explore project ideas and as a part of that uh, creating some uh, pull requests uh, trying uh, doing some prototypes or maybe some uh, minimal issues uh, would actually help you to create a better proposal so uh, that's uh, the reason why uh, the most of accepted projects actually have history of contribution there's also the community bonding phase which happens before project selection and that that's one way to get to know people in the community is by um doing some pull requests yeah but uh, it's after the project is being accepted oh sorry yeah so it's also a part uh, important part uh, but the uh, project idea you explored them basically till march uh, 31st mm -hmm. okay thanks for that Yeah, thank you too. Okay, should we move on then? Or are there any other questions? Uh, I would like to ask one. Mm -hmm. uh, so these project styles are are given on website, right? So mm -hmm. uh, can we start uh, making proposal right now? You mean? Uh, application or what uh, do you want uh, to propose, propose you? yeah yeah you can start working on them uh, earlier uh, so how it usually happens um, you have seen uh, this uh, proposal from perichay uh, yeah. usually students submit google docs in advance so that uh, people can review them so for example uh, once you uh, explore the project idea or once you have an idea what you would like to do Uh, you can submit the first initial draft uh, to review in the mailing list or to your mentors in the chats and uh, start getting some feedback and uh, it's recommended so if you already know what you want to work on yeah, you can uh, start right away and there is no need uh, to wait till the application process starts this date is just the first day uh, when you can submit something on the website that's it uh, for for some of the projects like uh, i was interested in the mm -hmm. uh, the python and the uh, mm -hmm. machine learning one specifically uh, mm -hmm. there weren't any um, suggested issues right so so how would be a, what would so uh, what mm -hmm. would be a good idea to you know okay. so yeah if you go here you can see that uh, there is uh, yeah, somebody has fun in this project idea that's one of why one of the reasons why we want to move uh, to jenkins io project ideas in ascii doc um, yeah so, it's not it's not good looking <laughs> okay so yeah, yeah we'll uh, move them soon uh, but yeah uh, the idea that even if there is no project ideas there are contact things so for example here there is mailing list there is a chat and you can see that uh, this chat uh, uh, points uh, to um, specific chat uh, to this project idea so if you don't see anything to work on you just follow these links and here you can discover that there are people including marky who is on the call and you can just uh, ask uh, if there are any tickets or tasks to consider and what areas uh, to explore so if you don't see something uh, just go here and ask okay awesome mm -hmm.
So maybe if we have some time uh, after these topics, which is not possible, we can uh, probably uh, spend time on the machine learning. And you can also ping me and Getter if you have specific uh, questions in that mm -hmm. machine learning channel, and I will be happy to help in any way possible. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, too. Okay, so let's move on. So uh, the next item was uh, Git uh, plugin project ideas from Mark Wade. Um, so Mark has submitted two project ideas. Uh, Mark, after the discussion today, do you have any open questions uh, or would you like to get some feedback? I, I would love to hear feedback, but I don't actually think I have any specific questions. I think that the one that you had on screen there, the, the oh, this one, fine too. Yeah. The repo caching one, or this one, so the plugin performance improvement one, there is, it's it's less likely to be a full three months of work, but there are many, many things in this general area which could be done and discovered mm -hmm. as a result of it. The micro benchmark harness will likely expose all sorts of things that can and should be improved. And the redundant mm -hmm. fetch thing is probably a month or more of work because of the complexity of retaining compatibility. Exactly. So what you could do, um, so you could uh, probably write it in a more open-ended thing. So even uh, probably merging uh, three ID, uh, this topic into that project ID as well, I don't know. It could be separate project IDs as well. It depends on how much independent they are. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you write in, in a way when basically it's up to the student uh, to make a proposal, and he, uh, for example, remove redundant fetch is just an example, uh, why not? Okay, yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm prone personally to keep them as two separate things because I think of mm -hmm. them architecturally as quite distinct. The, mm -hmm. the repo caching thing is introducing some ah. concepts that don't mm -hmm. exist and mm -hmm. has all sorts of locking and file system access challenges that are hiding behind it. Whereas the performance one is mm -hmm. more focused on alternatives and choices which can be made inside the implementation um, how to improve the specifics of details of the implementation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So I think, uh, so you, you, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, I think that uh, these project ideas are ready to go as project ideas. So yeah, maybe some formatting, thinking about the communication channels. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think they could be submitted. Okay, great. Now, mm -hmm. now on the communication channels topic, there mm -hmm. many of the many of the others use a separate Gitter channel as uh, to to have high bandwidth, low noise communication. Is mm -hmm. that has that generally been the preferred thing for most of the GSOC accepted projects that they have their own Gitter channel dedicated to that specific GSOC project? Mm, so historically, we have a lot of traffic in Gitter channels, and since Gitter, well, we is far from ideal in terms of uh, communication experience. Um, uh, project opted out uh, to separate channels. So uh, there are some exceptions, for example, for role strategy plugin for promoted builds, we don't have so much user traffic in the chats. So we just used uh, these channels for JSOC. But in your case, if you talk about a Git plugin, then uh, yeah, you would need to think what to take. So it could be, for example, platform seek channel, but platform seek channel is pretty active. So discussions and questions from students uh, may be lost here. And, uh, okay, so so in my case, it probably is best to create a new channel for the Git plugin and hide place both the top or those topics in it. If there's some additional traffic, great, but it's it's okay if I create a separate channel. Great, thank you. Yeah, right. So basically, there are two stages. One stage is application process. So it's uh, whatever happens uh, till the student project is announced. So this is a time when students come, ask questions, um, and there is not that much development, development happening by this time. At this point, it's better to use existing channels to avoid creating uh, new entities. Well, unless you feel that uh, having a Gitter channel for Git would be helpful anyway. Uh, 
um, but uh, when community bonding starts, so this is when the active uh, project starts. And uh, basically, uh, an accepted student works almost full, full time uh, during coding and uh, during community bonding, that there is also a lot of work selling for mentors. And then this time, uh, during community bonding, teams uh, just can select uh, the best communication channel uh, for them. So uh, in JSOC, we don't set a strict requirement what to take. Uh, and you will be able to select what you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's better to have something more standard. Uh, but yeah, if you have a specific need, for example, if you want uh, to work on uh, deeper integrations with Kubernetes ecosystem and you want to go to Kubernetes Slack, uh, it might be different. Uh, it might be possible. So, but it's the, up to a mentor team and uh, to the student to decide. Thank you. Okay. 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 Any other questions before we move on? None from me. Thank you very much for the help. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And also, my next steps are to create two pull requests, one for each project idea, and I will probably hoist one more project idea into the list for conversation. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Okay, so the last topic is Jenkins JSOC application draft. So what it means, we have um, application, uh, basically it's almost copy and paste, and paste of, uh, from the previous year. Uh, so it was adjusted uh, to reflect uh, new content. Um, it more or less ready to be submitted. Um, but if somebody wants uh, to make adjustments, uh, let's do so. And uh, I definitely, so, yeah. So when I submit my pull request, to submit a project idea, if I mm -hmm. think it's worth including in this application, I should also put into the the pull request a change to this. To no. this, no, I should not. Okay. No, because what this application is doing, mm -hmm. it's referencing our proposal link, which is where your mm -hmm. PR will go. So ah. mm -hmm. you don't need to do anything to this uh, per se. Just your okay. your PR will go to proposals, which is already mm -hmm. linked as. Oleg has highlighted it. Yeah, well, it might make sense uh, to do some edits. For example, if you have a huge community interest uh, around uh, Git uh, plugin project ideas, we can highlight it, for example, here in a long description. So uh, we had a long description here, I just cut it from this year. So we say this year we invite students to join the Jenkins community, uh, whatever, whatever. And here we can provide specific examples. Uh, if you want. Another option is to edit proposal tags um, because proposal tags is uh, one of the ways to discover uh, projects uh, on the JSOC website. So for, again, if you have uh, a lot of ideas related to Git, we can uh, put it here. So we are limited uh, to 10. So if you add something, we also need to remove something. Um, but right and okay so with that upper limit of 10 when mm -hmm. I look at that list I think those lists those things are much broader than git they're much are likely to be much more interesting many of them than git so I would tend to leave mine off that list unless we see significant interest in the the ideas okay thanks All right. Oleg can I ask you a question on the tag for electronic design automation yeah what is that what does that fall for what is that sort uh, so, of math yeah, so. to so we have uh, two project ideas uh, which were transferred uh, from the previous year um, uh, about um, hardware, basically, and electronic. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. That uh, now I remember. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, this is so the risk. The risk five ideas integrate with with various EDA mm -hmm. tools. Well, there uh, there is no risk five here. Oh, so if sorry. somebody wants uh, to offer risk five project idea, I'm all in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we have a project idea for EDA coverage adapters. So basically reusing uh, the project from 2018 uh, by Xin Yuzhang uh, and to implement uh, coverage reports for uh, EDA tools, which is a quite hot array now. And another one is just a generic proposal to have integration with whatever tool. So these project ideas are still around. 
Uh, that's why we have this tag. Uh, but yeah, yeah, last year we got some interest, but so, to be honest, not that much. So again, uh, these uh, tags can be a subject for discussion. Though for us, if we don't uh, put a tag here, uh, there is basically no chance that uh, this project ideas will be discovered. So yeah, it's something we can discuss. And obviously all this text, if you want to improve something, please do so. Uh, because yeah, this text uh, was polished a bit, uh, but it would be uh, great uh, to get some feedback. And for example, there are some topics which we will need to be to think about. For example, uh, DevOps world, Jenkins world. Uh, one of the topics is uh, that it uh, won't be Jenkins world anymore next year. So it's an open question whether we want to reference this specific conference or whether we want to talk for other events, for example, CICD summits. Uh, so yeah, this is also a subject for pollution before we submit the final application. So by uh, the beginning of February, we need to finalize this process. Okay. Any questions about that? Oh, yeah. That's... Should we? I was going to highlight that Oleg software in the public interest. Are we under the uh, continuous delivery foundation as well? Uh, I believe we should reference both in the current state. Okay. So, so yeah, it's partially part of the ongoing Jenkins board discussion. So we had election uh, in early December, and now there are knowledge transfers being organized. So the current state of uh, the migration uh, to continuous delivery foundation, uh, that uh, this migration isn't over. So for example, uh, SPI hasn't transferred to the trademark yet, or to CDF, uh, there were also other things. Uh, so formally we are still a part of SPI, uh, but yeah, according to our website, we're also part of CDF, as you may see. So I believe we should just reference both here. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah, if you see uh, bits like that, uh, just comment in the chat so we can edit it. We are coming up to the top of the hour. Uh, exactly. So, we should yeah. uh, start closing down. So, um, uh, the last topic we had project ID status, but basically except what we discussed, uh, there are just some ideas floating around, like uh, ideas submitted by Rick, uh, also some ideas uh, proposed by me. Um, what we need to do, we need to start putting these ideas uh, on the list, because this is uh, the list uh, according to which uh, Google will judge our application. And we definitely want uh, to have uh, new project ideas uh, being compared to 2019. So whomever has uh, project ideas in mind, please uh, spend some time uh, to start drafting them and submit them. And Oleg, again, the, the mm -hmm. application date to, to the timeline to Google begins next week already? Yeah, so next week uh, the application is open. Uh, the deadline for applications is February. Uh, but uh, yeah, so basically by the beginning of February, we want to have as many project ideas as possible in the ideas as separate list. So for these uh, ideas, it's a relatively a small uh, thing to do. We just need to convert them to a ski doc, uh, maybe to apply some copy, copy editing, and they are accepted because all the um, of them uh, already uh, comply with templates. But for new project ideas, yes, we need to go through the hoops and uh, to post, just have a draft, to have discussions, and to move them to another separate state. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's important that, that those of us who are submitting project ideas get them in quickly because we've only got maybe a few weeks to go through the process to get them from draft into accepted on this page. Great. All right. Well, I'll get uh, mine submitted. 
period. So there is no strict uh, deadline as February 8th. So February 8th is when uh, our final proposal goes to Google, but final proposal uh, reflects uh, the application draft, this one. And uh, it just includes a hyperlink to the project ideas list. So we can keep editing the project ideas, we can uh, accepting new project ideas, basically until uh, 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 the student application period starts. But uh, earlier you posted this project idea, uh, more chances you have uh, to get uh, students reaching out. Because yeah, as you may see from this meeting, there is also really a lot of uh, students on the call. There is even more students reaching out uh, to us in Gitter channels. So if you post your idea earlier, uh, as a potential mentor, you have higher chances uh, to uh, get more traction for your project idea. Great, thank you. Okay. So, I guess that's it. So thanks to everybody who participated. Uh, yeah, this meeting was a bit long and uh, we will try to keep the next meetings uh, to 45 minutes. But again, in the next year, we will first, list, in the next meetings, we'll start from point A and then we will be able uh, um, to proceed uh, to the project update topics. Thanks. Okay. Um, I've noticed uh, some questions um, in uh, the chat. Do we need to discuss them? I've tried answering them as many as I could in there. Okay, thank you. So yeah, if anything is uh, still needed, uh, let's just uh, sit in the Gitter channel. Okay. Yep, thanks a lot, guys. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank Sounds you, good. everybody. Nice see, you, see you online. See you all next week. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Bye.